Hey friend, we're Lisa Lord and Sarah Jacobson, and this is the Christian Business Breakdown, a podcast for faith-led business owners to start, build, and scale their business, all without second-guessing their every move. We're former teachers turned business owners who finally broke down and let go of trying to run our businesses the way everyone said we should. If you're ready to become the expert in your business and stop trying to do all the things, we've got you covered. You can start with Sarah or level up with Lisa, all right here on this one podcast. It's time to set aside your never-ending to-do list, pop in your earbuds, take a deep breath, and join us each week. We equip you with the tools and skills you need to be an empowered CEO, discerning the best strategies to maximize impact and income for your unique business. And we even have a little fun along the way. We love practical business strategies, Jesus, and keeping it real. It's time to break it down. You are in for a special treat today. We are welcoming a guest, Sarah Barco, my client and friend, who is a sales and marketing consultant. She has a deep passion and drive for connecting businesses both to their community and to other business owners to help them connect and grow their business in a relational, non-salesy, approachable way. Before you say, hey, Sarah, Lisa, I have an online business, or I'm just brand new to business, or networking doesn't relate to me, I want to encourage you to listen to today's episode because I think Sarah's going to change your mind about who can benefit from networking and how you can actually get started. She also has an amazing story about how when she launched her business, God said, hold up, wait a minute, we're going to do this a little bit differently. And I know you're going to be blessed by her story and how she really listened to God in that process. I also have to warn you that Colorado has had some crazy weather this summer. And so while we were recording this episode, a massive thunderstorm and hailstorm moved through Lisa's neighborhood. And so you might hear some of that in the background. We tried to edit it out as best we can, but know that no one was harmed in the recording of this episode. And now on with the show. Welcome, Sarah, to the podcast. We're so glad that you are here. You've kind of had a unique faith journey, and um, you have told us that you spent uh, a time in your life where you spent four weeks sleeping in a recliner. So can you just kind of briefly share your story and kind of tell us how you got to where you are now? Yeah, this this is a fun one for me. So I launched my business in November 2019. I had a hard date that I wanted to launch and it was November 1st because I set that date and in my mind it was going to be that way no matter what. And I worked hard. I pushed through every deadline. I sacrificed a lot. I made it to November 1st. I launched my business. I took, that was a Thursday. I took that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off and gave it to my kids and my family because I had missed a lot of time. That following Tuesday, I was getting up for a leads group and hit the floor. I couldn't move. I had excruciating pain in my abdomen. I couldn't walk. And I, my son was 15, taking driver's training at the time. And I put him and my seven-year-old daughter in the car in case someone would need to drive with me. And I said, I'm going to make it to the ER, but I need you guys here. And Jacob, you might be taking over driving if I can't get there until my husband could get home from work to pick them up. And so took them, went into the ER discovered a large grapefruit-sized cyst on my right ovary that I never knew was there. They immediately wanted to do surgery to determine if it was cancer or endometriosis. They didn't know, and I didn't know what endometriosis was at the time. That is what it ended up being, Um, and they had to do kind of a traumatic surgery to not – they couldn't remove the cyst because the endometriosis was stage 4 at that point, which I never even knew existed. And just kind of covering a lot of my stomach, liver, kidneys, things like that. So they actually had to drain the cyst and it was it was a longer surgery. And I came out of that like a brand new business owner that had to recover and not move. Like my instructions were to sit and do basically nothing for the next two to four weeks while my body recovered. And I didn't know how to sit still. I was an outgoing, extroverted, always on the run person. And to stop, that was the first time that I can remember that I actually found stillness and heard God Mm. speak to me. And I remember this like so emotional sitting in that recliner And I was, you know, at that point where I was crying out to God, like, Mm. why am I in this? Like, I thought I followed all your instructions. I thought I did what I was supposed to do. I'm enjoying this work. This is different from what I'm, I feel better. Why am I in this position? And I remember God saying so clearly to me that you never brought me into your work. Like you Mm. did all this completely on your own for you. And you did invite me in. 
And it just like, it still hits me really hard that I, I was in that position because I think a lot of new business owners get into a zone and we just go and we forget that we're not supposed to be doing the work alone, that we're supposed to bring God in arm and arm with us and we're doing the work for him. Like we're just there to help do his work. And I never took the time to actually absorb that and ask him what the work was. And so that's that's where I sat for the next four weeks talking to God a lot about where he wanted my business to go. And then those anguished tears and that resentment and that bitterness became like asking for forgiveness and grace and just really like diving into what the work was that God, what I felt God really wanted me to do next. Dang. That is just like, that's like the crux of what we do here, right? In, on the Christian Business Breakdown is just like how to invite God into yeah. your business and how often we create something that is like, we think we're doing the right thing. And then it's like, hey, yes. sit yourself down in a recliner for a little while. All right. We're going to make this happen. Right. Yeah. It was a great experience. It was one that yeah. I will never, ever forget. So, And isn't God so gracious to us that he doesn't let us go for so long right. <laughs> in, in our <laughs> selfishness and in our stubbornness and in our desire to want to do good, but just going about it the wrong way? Mm -hmm. I think we've all probably got some sort of recliner story. And yes. if we don't, then we should probably pray for one. Maybe not to the extent that you have, but some sort yes. of story that slows us down and humbles us. He doesn't want to drag us along. He doesn't want us to do it alone. He wants to walk arm in arm with us. And I, I love that image of God wanting to really partner with us. And that is what we talk about here. And so what do you think truly was the result after these four weeks? Now you're able to get up out of that recliner. You've got this launch that you were supposed to do, but you didn't because God stopped you. What was that next four to six weeks like for you right after that? That was the game changer right there. That was everything. I looked at my perception of what I was doing completely shifted. And it, it felt really selfish. Like I was doing all this work and I put all this time into something that had, it felt like it didn't have the right purpose. And I, mm -hmm. I felt like I had to scratch it all and I didn't scratch it all. But what I did is I, I started scratching off the pieces that God didn't approve of anymore that mm -hmm. I could sit there and say, you know what? Mm -mm. That was a hundred percent for me and not for, and I really, that's when my mentality and my perspective moved from me into community and God, where am I supposed to grow a community? And what's that look like? Not in my eyes, but what does that look like in God's eyes? How is, how is Sarah is supposed to influence a community and get people together to build the relationships? That was huge is God wants us to be in relationships. And so I have this gift that I know how to connect people and I love connecting people. So God, use that. Please just use that in whatever your will is. And I will move in that direction however you see fit because I feel like that is a true strength. And I think we can recognize that. I think all of us have that ability to know like when we're using our God-given strengths and when we're not. And when that not hits, we're like, mm hmm. Okay, I got you. I know. Time to do something different. Mm -hmm. And that really is your superpower. That's what I would call it <laughs> is that superpower that God has given you is that building communities, yes. building relationships, connecting people in a way that we really need, especially post COVID. Like, we need yes. to be connected on a deeper level mm -hmm. and not that superficial level. And so I love that you're using that sweet spot, that superpower you. that you have in your business. And that's really what we're here to talk about today is that, you know, networking, connecting with other people. Mm -hmm. It's not just meeting people and saying, oh, my name's Sarah. What do you do? There's something deeper there that right. you're going to really teach us about today. And I'm super excited to learn <laughs> uh, from you. Sarah, you say that people make the mistake of believing networking is connecting, but mm -hmm. tell us the difference like why you think networking isn't connecting with people and what networking really is sure so it, it's a big one for me because i hear it a lot so i i often hear the terms intermixed right i'm going to go out and network i'm going to meet so many great people i'm going to build my business and i think networking is a great place to start and everyone needs to network i do think that networking is a foundational seed and it's a great you, you know the, the lower level the foundation level where we start but I think the difference is that networking is not connecting. Networking is just meeting people. It's getting to know someone. It's asking the questions. You know, what is your name? What do you do? How do you do that? Who's, you know, it's those surface level questions 
But really connecting is the experience that comes from that. Mm. And I think that's the big difference is are you are we going into a networking opportunity looking for a lead or just a person that we can talk to and that we can learn something about, maybe take a business card and and identify something different with? Or are we looking to really grow and connect and pursue and celebrate and support that? And so that's a really big difference for me. I think everybody can talk to people if you want to get out and grow your business. There's not a lack of opportunities to network. There's so many great ways to do it. And there's so many unique places to start. There's great ideas out there. You can Google, you can chat GBT, all these different things about networking. But I think to really connect, you need to have a mindset of wanting to go in to know that other person and learn and again, understand who they are, who God made them to be and how you are supposed to connect and work together. Really knowing before you go in is what I hear you saying, like, what is my intent with this? Everyone can benefit from it. But what Mm -hmm. do I really want to get out of it Mm -hmm. is going to move you beyond just, hey, this is my name. This is what I do. Yes. If you go into something with the mindset that you're just going to network, you're going to miss the mark 100% of the time with potential opportunities that you never knew you would have had if you hadn't really tried to, like you said, prepare ahead of time to connect. It's almost like the networking is like the delivery system to like meet people, but you actually have to take the next step. You know, I just recently started networking. I don't know why I've never done it for my business. I've been in business for 12 years, but I was you know, doing a lot of families and stuff. And I'm like, well, when I network, do you need a family photographer? Like just didn't feel natural for me. But now that I'm working more right. business to business, it was like, oh my gosh, I've got to start doing this. And it has been so incredible for me, but it's because I have gone to these events and then said, hey, let's grab coffee together and made deeper yes. connections and started following each other on Instagram and like, you know, just interacting with each other a little bit more. So it's not just networking and going to an event. It's right. more like you have to go deeper. And I think that's what you're saying there. It's yeah. It's the mindset of doing unto others, right? First, do unto others as you don't want done unto you. And so again, like you just said it, if you're going in with that, let's get a coffee afterwards. Or how is it possible that I can support you? What do you need in your business? And you're asking these questions that are not about you, right? You're showing up at an event with your business, your name tag on, whatever it may be. But really, you're showing up for the purpose of someone else and for the outcome of something different beyond and outside of yourself too. Which is a biblical principle, Jeremiah 28. I believe mm-hmm. it's verse seven. I love, everybody always qu- quotes Jeremiah 29, 11, but actually Jeremiah 29, seven says that they were to seek the peace and prosperity of the city around them and then they would be blessed. Mm-hmm. And that's really where I've tried to come in this year in my business is yes. how can I bless others? Because I know in return, I will be blessed. So I, I love that part of it there in networking. So I have a question because I know Lisa has really benefited from from networking as a photographer based here in Denver, but my business is online and I do coaching. Yeah. What would you say to someone like me? And I know um, that I've heard you speak this answer to other people, but I would love for our listeners to hear this too. Who benefits, you know, if I have an online business or e- even if I have a local business, how, how do I do this? Who should be doing it? You know, how do I kind of get going in that? I think that everyone needs to network, whether you're in person networking for a photography business or your online networking for a coaching business, I think networking is a beautiful process to be able to meet new people. So I think that there are different ways that you can network. And because obviously, when you're networking, and you're connecting with people person to person, Lisa, you have the opportunity to also use some body language and to really show people on a different level than maybe Sarah can online. A lot of Sarah's words are going to be heard and how she says things. Sarah, a lot of your movements and what you do with what your work is, that's a form of networking. So I think it can be a little bit different for each type. And so the value of what you both bring is going to be, I think, the really big opportunity to connect with someone when you have the value of photography and the outcomes of what comes from that you're pouring into someone for the future of their business, and for what they need coming to Sarah. So are you in a sense for their coaching? It's just you're doing it online. And you're giving them all these pieces without even having to be in the room with them. So they can just kind of think these things and you have this outcome algorithm for them. I I feel like it's this magic algorithm that happens. 
the value that you both are able to bring is what connects and that creates that experience for them. So that's kind of like where that networking comes. So hopefully that makes sense and how I answer. What would you say to someone who is like, I am brand new in business. I don't even know what to say. I'm too scared to go and like do this. I'm going to fumble over my words. I don't know what my sweet spot is, but I, you know, is there (laughs) even any value in me doing networking this early on in my business? A hundred percent. Yes. So I have been in those exact shoes. In fact, when I started out, um, even before my business, when I started in the marketing world, the person I was working with that hired me for marketing said, all right, now I need you to go out and I need you to meet some new people and I need you to join the chamber and I need you to do all these things. And I looked at him straight in the eye and I said, what is a chamber? I have no clue what a chamber. That's how fresh out of the gate I was. I had no, I was in a job for 12 years doing social work behind, you know, four walls meeting with just the people in my little cubicle area that would come and go with me. I didn't need to network. I didn't need to market myself. It was a complete shift. And I, I will say to that person that is in those shoes, the most beautiful thing that you can do is just go out completely fresh and completely humble and authentic and say, you know, walk in the doors, like open the doors to a business and say, hi, I'm Sarah. And I have absolutely no, what I, no idea what I'm doing. I'm fresh out of this marketing world. This is where I come from. I would just really love to meet you and learn about you so that I can understand how to do this better. And I think when we go in very humbly appro- with a humble approach and very new, that shows people that we're real mm-hmm. And that we're willing to just show up. And when we mess up and we stutter and we don't say the right things, it shows that we're not scripted Mm. and that we're not trying to be so prepared. There is so much value. And I teach my clients this is to show up unprepared sometimes. Like, you know, we, we are taught to prepare, prepare, prepare. And for a lot of things, that's great. If you're going into a surgery... To work on my body, I want you to be prepared, (laughs) right? right? (laughs) But if you're walking into a business door, I think there's really beauty. Or if you're going on a live or if you're going on like a podcast, I think there's a lot of beauty in just coming with yourself Mm. in your heart and just pray for that peace of like God's wisdom to just be over you and the people that you're sitting with. And those right words, have faith that those words will come and what needs to be heard will be heard. But that's what I would say is, Go in with a go in fresh, mm-hmm. like go in new and just admit that you're brand new at this and you have a lot to learn and maybe they can help you. I love that so much. And that's so often we feel like we need to be perfect, but people really value when you're not. Like people appreciate that so much. And I love yes. when people say that to me and I love when they're honest and it mm-hmm. helps them to feel like they have skin in the game and they want to help you and they- It gives them yes. purpose. Mm-hmm. I love that. So how do you suggest people do that? How do they get out there? How do they pound the pavement? You know, we're in this post-COVID world and I feel like we've kind of lost yeah. our ability to be in a room. And I know for me, it's, it's intimidating too, but I've just made it a goal for myself. And I'm like, I know this is going to be hard. I'm kind of an introvert anyway. And despite having a podcast, I am an introvert. And like going to those can be really hard for me. <laughs> Me, but I have just been like, I'm going. And yes. I, you know, in your mind, you have all these excuses that come up. Well, I, this came up and I'm like, nope, you are going yes. and you just need to put yourself out there. And, and so how, what's, what are your recommendations? I'd love to hear that. I, it's a great question because often, and I think often people, I have been in that space too, where I felt like I just have to go in and put my head down and just, just put all the fear aside and just go for it. And yes, right? So there is that piece of us that just needs to put that fear in the back seat and away from the driver's side and just go and have faith and be strong. And But there's also a part of us that also, again, we need relationships. Mm-hmm. We're built for relationships. We don't have to do networking alone. We don't have to connect alone. So use the resources of friendships, of family, people that you know first. I think that is an underused untapped resource is like we always think we have to meet people and new people and keep on going and new and new and new. But we have all these untapped and unused resources that we just we have loved and cared for us and have supported us and encouraged us. They would gladly, again, arm in arm, go with us to an event and help us introduce the room with us. If you're going to a chamber event, Sarah, I've said this before with with you, like if you're going to a new event, utilize the resources from that event and call them up and say, hey, I am brand new to this. I don't know even really what a chamber is. I've never been to a leads event or a networking event with your organization before. I'm going to be coming tonight. Is there someone that can, you know, walk the room with me and maybe introduce me to some new people? It's a win-win for them 
in you. So I think utilizing the people, if you're going to a vendor event, get in touch with the director or even someone at the tape, one of the tables and say, do you know a lot of people here? Like, could you introduce me some new faces? Because I feel like a stranger here. Like, again, Lisa, like you said, it helps people feel like they have skin in the game. And it's that purpose. People love to help people. And if we just ask, and I think we forget that we forget that we can ask for help because we have to be the strong, independent business owner, and we have to know it all. And I think just talking to those that are around us, you know, asking questions in our Facebook groups or our, our, our different social platforms that we have and just putting that again, that vulnerability out there saying, all right, guys, I need some help. I'm new at this. I know you guys know more than I do. You've been doing this longer. Who knows someone or this, who knows somewhere I can go for this or where should I surround myself when an environment, if I'm looking to succeed in this, I think those are a couple and the people that serve us think about every time that you go into a coffee shop or a restaurant, those people see hundreds of people and they just are in the motion of what's next, what's next, what's next. But if you stop and ask them, you know, hey, I know you meet so many people in and out your day. Do you know anyone that I could talk to about A, B, or C? Those are all great places to start. And then just walking in the door, Mm -hmm. walking in, there's that fear of what's on the other side. And there's that fear, especially when you see that no soliciting sign, (laughs) you're like, am I a solicitor? Do I qualify as that? Like you have to say, nope, I'm not a solicitor. I'm a friend. I'm a potential friend. And I'm coming in because I want to help them. And then when you walk into a space or talk to someone that you don't know or that you do know, and again, if that that first mindset piece, that first step is about them and how you can support them, then gloves off. You know, it's not a threatening thing anymore. It's like, let's help each other. This person doesn't want to sell me something or spam me. This person wants to learn. Lisa says a lot of times when we're talking about things that mature adults ask for what they need. And I just have really tried to remember that, that that is what we have to do. And as business owners, we got to get really comfortable with asking for what we need because we have to do it day in and day out. And so that's just great advice about networking is that we can really, you know, overcome this fear. At least I think you would say that now, like going to networking events is really fun for you. It was just that getting over (laughs) that initial fear and like asking for help and just, you know, that cliche of getting out of your comfort zone and pushing through to do it because you knew this was going to take you to the next level as a business owner. And I did, I did join Mm -hmm. a chamber with my brother-in-law and his sister. And so I knew a couple people. So you're right. Going arm in arm with somebody, it was so much easier to go to my first couple events because I knew someone. So that is such a, such a great helpful hint for people that, that they can really do. So what are some untapped resources? Like Lisa said, you know, she's gone to the chamber of commerce. I know you found some other networking events online, but what are some of those untapped resources that you think, Sarah, people aren't really taking advantage of in order Mm -hmm. to network? You just mentioned something that the the word maturity, I think is so important how you spoke to that, because I think connecting is a a mature piece. Like we can't connect if we're in an immature space. Mm -hmm. And I think that it does take some growth and time to learn. And there's not, unfortunately, this class that's like networking and marketing and connecting and building relationships 101, right? There is no class for that. So there is this. (laughs) Yeah, there there should be. be. Come on, Sarah. We should all, you know, (laughs) if someone hasn't done that yet. I think that just growing into that and growing from an immature space of just watching what everybody does and trying to do it is but the maturity of, you know what, I can do this different. I can I can figure out a way that just makes sense and be responsible. I think connecting is responsible. I think it, you, you also have to have a lot of patience mm. with connecting because it's not a quick win sometimes. It can take a little bit of time, especially when you're trying to learn about people. So I, I you know, I talked about, you know, just attending events to talk to people without that agenda. But I also feel like one of the things that really helped me a lot was remembering that I need to bring God back into it. Mm. So with when I'm building a business, I needed to bring him in. When I'm going out and networking, I needed to bring him in. When going out to an event, I needed to bring him in. And so I think there's something very powerful for me that started happening and transforming when I found a little bit of discomfort in sitting with God to find comfort in that, mm. to like sit there and say, you know what? I don't know. And I don't have all the answers of the best places to do this, but I want to show up in the best places. And I think another untapped resource is 
our armor. And that was a big one for me is like, we have this armor that God gives us and being able to put that on before we go out. I had to remember really be intentional to do that. Like, oh, I have this spiritual armor and I can choose to put on these pieces Mm -hmm. and go out and really dig in like those shoes, man, they're supposed to dig into those hard Mm -hmm. things and get us uphill. So those are some things. But I think that with that comes assessing our core values and our core emotions too. So don't forget to really take some inventory of those pieces within yourself, like what you stand for, what you feel that you stand for, what you want people to see, what do you want them to walk away with and the emotion you want them to feel? Because that's, again, how you get from networking to a connection is you have to have an experience. And I think a really great experience always happens when an emotion is there. Those are just a few things. But again, tapping into the people that you know, really paying attention to body language. I say this a lot because, you know, sometimes it can feel awkward when you're connecting or trying to connect with someone and maybe they're just not into it, right? Or maybe they're in a space where they don't know how to network or connect. I feel like that's just a, you know, it's reading people's body language to know too, like, maybe I shouldn't push so much to get to know this person because they're a little uncomfortable or maybe they're not in the right space for where they need to be right now. So it's again, recognizing the needs of others over ourselves. That's another another thing that I would talk about too. I love that you said at the beginning that to not go into everything so prepared with what you want to say. But what Mm -hmm. I hear you saying in that answer is the preparation that maybe is a little bit more of the right work to do when you're connecting Mm -hmm. and networking with other people is to be intentional about how you want to make other people feel. You don't necessarily have to have all of these perfect words and your mission statement. And, you know, we've talked about an elevator pitch in a previous episode. You don't have to have that all perfect. But if you can just go in and say, I want to make other people feel heard. I want to make other people feel comfortable. Then the Holy Spirit's going to meet you there and give you the right words to say. So I I love that. It's like, okay, I can, I can do that. (laughs) I can, (laughs) I can actually do that. And like, prep for a networking event. I don't know what I would say. I would feel like I didn't really know what I was doing, but I know how to make people feel heard. And I know Mm -hmm. how to make people feel comfortable with me and hopefully, you know, get a little smile and just enjoy the conversation. And that feels a lot less overwhelming than I want to go to a network event and get three clients. That that feels salesy. That feels scammy. That feels overwhelming. I probably would never do that. But it's like, if I can go into it with, I just want to have some conversations and meet some really interesting people and you know, that's it. Then I I could actually do that. Don't be afraid to change what that definition of success is when you go into a room to network because success can be, I met with one really great person and we connected and I just feel like that person and I were meant to meet today. Like we're going to do something and change something really great together. Um, yeah, don't take that for granted. It's yeah. it's just that simple switch in the mindset of it doesn't have to be for this. It can really just be for this. When you're going into a networking event thinking like, I'm going to get three clients, that's not the point. It's the point is connection. And maybe you're just, maybe you're, a better goal would be, I'm going to make one connection where I'm meeting with somebody outside of this event to build a deeper relationship for both of mm-hmm. us, you know? And so that's, if you're saying I want three new clients, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself and to be able to- yeah create that instant connection and get a client right away that that doesn't happen like you have to put in the work unfortunately we we don't want to but you have to put in the work and that is what a lot of this is about but I love the idea of just like not what can you do for me what can I do for you and if you put that on there it just makes it less pressure of just like how can I help you and what Mm -hmm. what do you need and what are you struggling with and maybe you even have a couple questions in the back of your head that you ask every owner that's different than do you have children and how long have you been in business you know and just having maybe a question like hey what's your biggest struggle right now. Maybe that's yeah. a little bit too vulnerable, but you know, that could be a good question that opens up yes. opens up more stuff too. So I don't know a lot of people that walk out of a room when they connect with someone on that level, like they made someone feel good or they made someone smile or they just lighten someone's load that day or connected in a new way. I don't know many people that can walk out of that and be like, well that sucked. Like that was awful yeah. or that just that was defeating. You know? Yeah. I think everyone can feel good from walking away. So when we shift that, we take that self-defeat and that pressure and everything off of ourselves. And we don't walk out of events saying, I just didn't do what I, I just, I didn't get those three clients. I, shoot, I didn't even get two. You know, I, they'll probably never call me. It's very much, wow, 
you walk, I mean, you walk out of every room. Wow. That was really great. I just learned and everyone feels like they contributed. I love that question that you asked Lisa, like, what's your biggest struggle? How can, how can I help you? Because the answer might not be, oh, my business solves that problem. It might be, oh, I have a friend, Lisa, who does that. And it's, it's then making that other connection for them, but you help them solve a problem in a way that they couldn't solve it on their own. Cause they don't know Lisa does, you know, branding photography. They don't know that Sarah does networking and events and and those kinds of things, but I made that connection for them. Mm -hmm. And, And that's a win. So, so I think you're right, Sarah, like redefining those definitions of success, especially when it comes to networking events and connecting with other people that, yeah, that's a success. I helped them solve a problem that they had in their business that they were desperate to solve. It wasn't me, but it was someone else. And maybe it gave Lisa a new client or Sarah a new you know, person for her business. Mm-hmm. So Sarah, what's one thing that you'd want people to take away from what we've talked about today? What's going to be the most helpful thing for them? I think recognizing and remembering, keeping it fresh, that connecting is personal. It takes time and it's mostly about your actions and the experience that you and the other person have together, not so much what you say. That's very freeing. <laughs> it's like makes it just, you know, so much easier and less less at stake when you think yeah. of it in those terms. It can be an intimidating thing, so it's good to have that broken down in that way. What's one thing that you've consumed in the last month that has been life-giving? It could be a podcast, a TV show, something that you've just really, that has given you life over the last few weeks. Well, I'm definitely going to say Sarah Jacobson's 90 Day Knockout Uh. because (laughs) as I'm consuming that, even past 30 days, it's been life-giving to me. And she knows this, just working with her has been a pleasure. So a little plug in for Sarah Jacobson Uh, there. But also is a book that I've been reading called 100 Days of Less Hustle and More Jesus. And that has been life-giving. It's really helped me to be intentional about slowing things down and that I really have to be in the space of Jesus and not so much in the space of myself. (laughs) That's great. We'll put a link to that book in the show notes. Perfect. That sounds like a book that I need. (laughs) Everybody needs this book. Everybody needs that book. Where can people find you, Sarah, so they can connect with you and just kind of hear more about what you do and who you are and so that they can get all the goods behind Sarah Barco? So I can be found on my website at trueselfbrm.com. I'm on LinkedIn as myself, Sarah Barco. I'm on Facebook, uh, True Self Business Relationship Marketing. And I'm also on Instagram, true underscore self underscore consulting. Go check out Sarah on those platforms and connect with her and learn more about how you can uplevel your business with networking and connecting. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Thanks for joining us for today's breakdown. If this episode has empowered you, please leave a review and share with a fellow CEO. Remember, you are the expert of your business. So break it down your way.